conceptual perspectives people talk Real about talk, it, it throwing shots. all of the elements. <laughs> Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick here dropping in on you. Hope everybody is having an unbelievable week to this point. Look, I'm going to get right to it. Uh, you saw the preemptive uh intro video uh, you know that we're in a fundraiser I cannot stress to you enough the importance of supporting grassroots organizations and programs that actually touch very important issues within the black collective and the black community um, we as a people tend to finance the oppressor through consumerism while starving out the people who are actually fighting for our empowerment. We've got to change that narrative. Um, I was forwarded a video. It's actually old because it looks like it was going, he did this. And I know that I was actually contacted about a client who actually works with David Mann um, through her PR firm. And she mulled over trying to connect the two of us and for whatever reason it never happened and I wish it would have happened. Uh, but uh, during that time, he was on tour with his family and um, they were doing whatever that tour was that the whole family was on tour. Uh, but he stopped by the, God, what's the, the lady's show? She used to be a reporter, she has her own show now. I can't think of it, but anyway she brought up the fact that he had finally been open about de dealing with oppression. And it turns out that David Mann, one of the people who have, who has given the black community and others so many laughs over the last 20 plus years, uh, as Mr. Brown, uh, admitted that he had a two year period in which he suffered from silently from depression. Uh, I've dealt with a lot of men who carry that and, 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 you know, I've dealt with it. And what, there are so many things that black men have to navigate through to even get to a point of saying, I need help. The stigma of depression for a man. The stigma of mental illness or a mental uh, disorder diagnosis for a man. Uh, saying, I need help for a man. Um, and it isn't a pride issue. It's a social dynamic issue. It's what's demanded of us. It's what's expected of us. Something he said when he was talking about this, he says, I'm a fixer. I fix stuff. And, you know, I want to make sure everybody else is all right. But at the end of the day, who's making sure I'm okay? That's huge. Now, let me break it down to you even further. He gets to a point where he says, it felt like I was drowning and no one knew. 
And the only way that anyone was going to know that I was drowning is that I was going to have to completely and fully drown. And what he's saying is no one knows what we're going through until we explode, implode, or just simply, simply collapse. This isn't about making excuses for black men. This is about talking about a real issue. One of the things we do uh, at the Odyssey Project, outside of provide racial socialization for black males, we also provide uh, wraparound services, which includes mental health access. And we do this for women too. Uh, this isn't isolating, but I'm talking about this specifically to men because men, uh, black women are most likely to suffer, suffer from depression out of all populations. Uh, across genders, across races, black women are most likely. And there's a reason for that. And we need to be aware of that. We need to confront that. But black women will, number one, acknowledge that they're suffering from depression, which makes other people aware of it. And while they don't get help at a rate that is considered uh, acceptable in in, in the numbers that we look at, they do it at a higher rate than men. So black men are suffering in silence. We're drowning. And everyone around us thinks we're okay because what? We've been trained to say, I'm good. We've been trained to say, I got it. We've been trained to say, I'm okay. And the truth of the matter is, the very person that's making you laugh, the very person that you can go to when something's not wrong, something's not right in your life, and they, they have the answer. The person you go to for inspiration. We are not checking on those who anchor us. We are just simply taking for granted that they're okay. Let me tell you something. No one's okay all the time. And when I'm reaching out to people that are connected to them, like, hey, man, how's it going? I'm good. You know, after a while, I'm going to say, hey, man, nobody's good all the time. It's okay not to be good. I need to know if you're not good so I can know what I can do. And you got to get through so many false reports to get the real thing because we've been conditioned to not show weakness. And we see saying, I'm sad or saying I'm overwhelmed with this feeling and, and not being able to explain it. And nothing is more frustrating to a man than to have something happen and he not have the ability to control it and, and, and move it on his own. And, and it, it's frustrating because we've been told for so long that a, a real man don't need help. He can do it. You got so many people out there pushing self-made man uh, uh, narratives that people buy into that and there's no such thing. You're made by the encounters and the social uh, relationships and social experiences and doors that are open, advice that is given. Yeah, you may have got out there and put in hard work and woke up every day and did it. That's what you're supposed to do. But I guarantee you, there was somebody whispering in your ears on those dark days. You didn't, you may not have registered it, but somebody was saying in some way, letting you know they believed in you in days you were doubting yourself. There were people who gave you the advice that gave you the push to move into the next arena. There's always something, but we are pushed and believe, and we believe that it's about being self-made. It's about saying, I didn't need anybody. The truth is we do need people. The truth is that we are social creatures, so we need one another by nature. We weren't meant to move alone. That's why if you isolate an individual for uh, extended periods of time, it will impact their mental health, all the way up to them hallucinating and creating alternative realities. The mind, the human mind, is meant to engage other people and we do that. Now, what happened is a lot of people went through some dark days during the pandemic because a lot of people were isolated. And that didn't help in a number of different ways. And then every other report was dark. Darkness and death around. 
and then people were actually passing away. So it was so much going on. In an instance like with David Mann, he's showing up every day, popping out on stage, making people laugh. But inside, there was something that was broken and he didn't know what it was and he was trying to fix it. He said the way he dealt with it, I've had men explain that they would come home after doing what they did and everybody was ratting and raving about how great a job they did and they would come in and literally go into a room in their house somewhere where it was dark and just cry. David said he would go in his office and just sleep. The only time he didn't feel beat up and down was when he was asleep. So he slept a lot. Depression has a way of doing that. It will make you uh, feel you, you'll lose energy. You'll lose the desire to do anything. You'll just want to sit there. It, it takes everything in your power to get out of bed in the morning. And it, uh, there are a bunch of other things that can come with it. But when you look at those things, it's telling you something's not right. And it's okay to admit it. And it's okay to need help. And it's okay to get help. And that's the thing I want to set up and I want to pass on to every person, male and female. It's okay to say, I'm hurting. It's okay to say, I'm sad. It's okay to say, I don't feel right. It's okay to say, I need help. I'm telling you because I love you. I'm telling you because it's becoming a devastating force within the black community. We are seeing spikes in suicides, 30% over the last five years, 49% among black males between the age of 14 and 24. Our young girls between five and 13 lead the statistical category in suicides in their age group. We can no longer go around yelling, black people don't kill themselves. We are killing ourselves and the number at which, the rate at which we're killing ourselves is increasing. This isn't simply uh, a nuance where it's pretty much the same. It's just because we have more ways to get the information and more ways for it to be reported, we now become aware of it. No, it's been increasing. And so that's something that we are going to have to uh, come to grips with. That's something that we're going to have to deal with. That's something that we are going to have to really truly uh, understand in order for us to develop um, means and methods and programs. And that's one of the things we do consistently is we offer ourselves as services to, for, for, I mean, domestic violence, intimate partner uh, violence, um, uh, ch adverse childhood, uh, experiences, childhood abuse, uh, and the issues that our men are dealing with, including uh, mental health Ill issues. And it's not just depression. We're dealing with paranoid schizophrenia. We're dealing with uh, a number of other different uh, issues along the lines of trauma. We're going to have to admit there's a problem. We're going to have to deal with the problem. We're going to have to address it. It's This is not one of those things that simply goes away. If I ignore it, if I just keep going, it'll go away. We keep going until we break. Oh, and here we go. I just want to really, truly impress upon you guys the importance of collectively coming together and being what we need to be and doing what we need to do. The individualism is destroying us. The idea that we don't need anybody is destroying us. It is time for us as a people to move into a place of unity. They fear that. They know the possibilities. They know the capacity. They know the potential. I've been doing a series where I'm reading from my book, Born in Captivity, where I outline the findings in my research uh, that explain our behavior, that explain the path we've taken uh, all the way from slavery to today. Uh, it, explain, it explains the sources and at the core of what's going on. It explains how we're managing and coping. It explains what needs to be done, provides solutions for empowerment. Uh, but at the end of the day, we're going to have to execute. We're going to have to execute. With that being said, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. 
thank you guys for lending me your time. This would normally be the time I would be doing Wealth Building Wednesday. Uh, but that weighed so heavy on me to hear him talk about that. And I, I thank God for him and his honesty because it's so easy to want to hide behind the I've got it all figured out. I've got life beat uh, persona and facade that most black men don't want to admit that they are there at, at times that we are vulnerable, that we have moments of weakness, that we are not perfect. But it's in that admission and being willing to plug into the things that can strengthen us, that can empower us, that can elevate and rejuvenate us and heal us, that really truly represents our strength. So again, I am challenging everyone. Look out for your loved ones. Brothers, if you're feeling some kind of way, it's okay to say you need help. Sisters, if you are going through something, reach out and get help. Everyone, if you believe in the work we're doing, this is the time to show it. We need your support. Look in the description box, click the link and donate. If you are one of those people, increasing, increasingly larger numbers, who prefers to uh, move and operate and give through Cash App, the organization's Cash App information is also in the description box. On that note, look, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day.